Now in these uh, graphs we're going to look at similar sort of idea but we're going to include the kind of more real world type situations uh, and also include the idea that it can change direction. So that's another kind of uh, step up. And once again, if I just did the exact same reasoning as I did a second ago, if I looked at the gradient of this velocity time graph, then it shows me it's constant and negative there, it's constant and negative there, it's constant and negative there. All of those values, all of those acceleration values, have a negative uh, value. And this situation is the idea of throwing a ball straight up, assuming there's no air resistance. Then what you get is a constant acceleration of minus 9.8 metres per second squared. Now that often causes a bit of confusion. On the way up, right, the velocity is positive. So we usually our standard convention is up is positive. That's kind of referring to the going up. Velocity is positive. Acceleration is negative. And because these are both acting against each other, i.e. the ball slows down. The value of the velocity is getting closer to zero. It's positive, it's decreasing, it's getting closer to zero. Zero is a point where it changes from positive to negative, i.e. when it changes from going up to going down, i.e. zero is the greatest height. Okay, it's that idea of instantaneously stopping. It doesn't stay there at that point, but it's got to change between a positive and a negative velocity. It's got to pass through zero. That instant is its greatest height. On the way down now, if we look at this bit, the velocity values are now negative. The acceleration, due to gravity, is still negative 9.8. But because these are both acting in the same di direction, i.e. the ball speeds up. And in this case, in a negative direction, i.e. down. So I need to move away from the idea that we met in that five, that a line sloping down always means deceleration. You've got to look in a bit more detail and say, is the value positive or negative? Is the line sloping up or sloping down? So if the value of the velocity is positive and the line is sloping up, then the object will accelerate. That's just like Mat 5. But if the value of the velocity was positive, for instance, and the gradient was negative, then the ball is going to be slowing down. When we go to the negative idea, if the value of the velocity is negative and the acceleration is negative, i.e. the line is sloping down, then you're looking at a ball that's speeding up in a negative direction. And lastly, if the velocity is negative but the acceleration is positive, i.e. the line is sloping up, then you're looking at a ball that's slowing down in a negative direction. In this last example, we're studying the motion of a ball which has been dropped and then bounces. So this is the velocity time graph. It starts at zero, but the ball is starting high up. And basically we're just going to look at each section a bit at a time and work out what's going on. So our first section here, the ball was dropped, so the velocity started at zero up there, and then it increases in a negative direction. So the velocity is negative, it's sloping down the way, so the acceleration is negative, i.e. it's speeding up in a downward direction. So this is a ball falling. The next section between B and C, the velocity values are still negative, it's still below the axis, but the acceleration is positive. 
the line is sloping up the way. And because these have both got opposite signs, it's slowing down. But it's still negative velocities, so it's still downwards. Now, what's happening that's caused it to slow down? Well, the ball has hit the ground. And although we often think of that as instantaneous, and it's been exaggerated a wee bit the length of time in this graph, what we've got there is a compression of the ball. So the ball has hit the ground and it's squashing down. And that's giving you this um, slowing down effect. So point C is when it stops squashing. It's when it changes from squashing down and the ball starts to expand again. So between C and D, the ball is expanding. So that's physically what's happening. What do we know at that point? Well, we know the velocity is positive. And because the line is sloping up the way, that the acceleration is positive as well. So what we've got is speeding up. Upwards. And like I say, physically what's happening there is the ball is uh, bouncing back, basically. It's expanding again, having squashed when it hit the ground. Eventually, it will leave contact with the ground. And that's why between B and D, that was when it was in contact with the ground. And that introduced other forces, so that's why the acceleration is dramatically different at that point. But D is when it leaves contact with the ground. If you notice the value there, right, it's leaving at about, say, plus 6.4, whereas it hit it at round about minus 8.8. .8. So it has lost a wee bit of energy in the bounce, which is you know, not surprising that would uh, happen in the real world. So the ball has now got some upward velocity because of that expansion. So at this point, right, the ball is moving upwards, but it's no longer in contact with the ground, so its weight is going to slow it down, acceleration due to gravity. So the velocity is positive, but we're back to negative acceleration due to gravity. So it's still on the way up, but these two have got opposite signs, so it's slowing down upwards. It's slowing down and getting to zero. So point E is the highest point after the first bounce. So when the velocity changes from positive going up the way to negative going down the way. So its weight has slowed it down so much that it's now going to be moving back down the way. So this last section between E and F we have got negative values of velocity, we're below the axis. The line is sloping down, so the acceleration is negative, i.e. we're back to the first section all over again, basically. It's speeding up downwards. And presumably F would hit the ground again, and this whole process could repeat. <laughs>